82 degrees overcast skies here in downtown Charlotte as we are just about ready for the Panthers and the Jacksonville Jaguars. Bureau D to Steve Berline, our entire CBS crew with you. Josh Gobion to boot it away for the Jaguars as Jacksonville comes into town today 1-1 one and one after a 32-3 defeat last weekend at the hands of the New York Jets. Meantime, Mike Goodson back deep to return. The third-year man out of Texas A&M. You've seen what he has done as a kick returner so far through two weeks of this NFL season. Better than 70,000 here in Charlotte today. Scobie's kick to the back of the end zone as Goodson barely catches it in play. It'll be a touchback. And Cam Newton, who has taken the NFL by storm through the first two weeks today, tries to become the first NFL quarterback to ever throw for 400-plus yards in three straight weeks. You see what he did last weekend against Green Bay. 432 yards through the air with three interceptions, he told us yesterday. Uh, caused him some sleepless nights, Steve, this week. And that is the only negative thing you can say about Cam Newton, Spiro, is that he's made a couple of shaky decisions, but what he's done so far is truly amazing. Two tight end formation for the Panthers on first and ten from their own 20. This is D'Angelo Williams trying to scoot up the middle just past the line of scrimmage before he is beaten back to the 20. Carolina offensively up front, Jeff Otai one tackle. He returns after sitting out last weekend against the Packers with a concussion. Cam Newton's arsenal of weapons, meantime, featuring Steve Smith, year 11 here in Charlotte. Today, Smith needs 38 yards to surpass Moosin Muhammad as the Panthers' all-time leader in receiving yards. Pick up of two yards for D'Angelo Williams. Sets up Carolina with a second and eight from the 22. Three wideouts from the shotgun. Crowded, flushed from the pocket. Newton buying himself some time trying to evade tackle as he completes to his tight end at the 28-yard line. That's Greg Olson, the fifth-year man out of Miami, a pickup of seven. Take a look at the starters defensively for Jacksonville, dealing with injuries today up front. Matt Roth is scratched, jammed his neck in practice late this week, and so second-year man Austin Lane makes the start. Linebackers getting an upgrade this season with the addition of Paul Puzlesny in the middle. He arrives after spending the last four years in Buffalo. And in the secondary, Dewan Landry, also a high-priced addition to this unit. Landry, the hard-hitting free safety who spent the last five years with Baltimore. Third and one. Newton again from the shotgun, fakes the throw, he picks up the first down as he lunges forward to the 35-yard line, a pickup of six. I would mention the Panthers 0-2 coming into today. Here is the Panthers' primer. You see the free agent additions, Shockey and Greg Olson, who already has had a hand in this game, the two tight ends that uh, they have featured extensively through the first two weeks of the season and the subtractions there on the bottom of your list. Richard Marshall, one of their key contributors in the secondary, no longer here. So early in this game, first and ten. Panthers moving the chains here from their own 35. Draw play to Williams. Williams picks up five, and he's brought down at the Panthers 40. We've already seen two examples, Spiro, of the difficulty that Cam Newton presents from a defensive perspective you know the first play drops back and past three guys had a shot at him he's big he's six foot five 250 plus pounds but he's slippery people they, they get they think they got a shot at him. they're going to knock him down but they don't even get a hand on him and he makes a play and then he picked up the good first down on third and short you got to always worry about him running with the football well he's five yards sets up a second and five some movement pre-snap Look like the right side of the Jacksonville defensive front. Neutral zone infraction. Number 94 defense. Came in the neutral zone, caused the offensive man to fall start. Five yard penalty, still second down. Bill Levy, our referee, that's Jeremy Mincy, whistled on the penalty. And Jack Del Rio displeased on that Jaguar sideline. And you got to give credit to the veteran Jordan Gross, the left tackle for Carolina. He, uh, I don't think he reacted as he normally would in a situation like that, but he knew when Mincy crossed the line of scrimmage that if he moved violently, he would draw the attention of the referee, and that's what got it, got the penalty for him. So the penalty sets up the Panthers second and one, just inside their own 45. This is the pullback up the gut, Jerome Felton. 
Fourth year man out of Furman. Picks up three yards. And another Carolina first down. Steve, how about keys to stopping Cam Newton for Jacksonville today? Well, I don't know if there is a way to stop him. I think the word should probably be how do you contain Cam Newton, but you got to keep him in the pocket. Don't let him bounce outside. He's already hurt you. You don't want to give up any big runs. If he is going to tuck it, just give him the short run. Make him one-dimensional. Take away the running game. Make him throw the football. And then I think the most important thing, you got to keep doing different things on defense to confuse him and not get locked in out there. Now, Newton actually tweaked an ankle late in the game against Green Bay here last weekend. Was in a walking boot Monday. But so far he's looked good. Here he is on first and ten. Airs it out near side to Smith who caught it. But the referees say he was out of bounds at the 32. And so the pass is incomplete. And this is a, something that Rob Chudzinski really shows a lot of confidence in Cab Newton with. This is an attacking downfield offense. And you see Steve Smith got his right foot in. That left foot came in out of bounds. No doubt about it, it was not a catch, but Cam Newton looks surprisingly comfortable to me, Spiro, standing back in the pocket, going through progressions, and he's earned the confidence of his offensive coordinator, Rob Chetinsky. This is second and ten, with the ball spotted at the Panthers' 47. Newton has all day to throw. Pocket starts to collapse. Newton rolling out. Now look at the footwork by Newton, dances inside Jacksonville territory, about four yards shy of the marker. <laughs> Is that not fun to watch? I mean, you, how many guys had a shot at him, and you can just see him frustrating the heck out of everybody out there. I mean, let's count these guys. You see that had a shot at him right there. You see one right there, and then he bounced outside. There's two, and then a couple of guys come over. You see, uh, <laughs> I mean, it's four, five, six guys that think they have a shot at him and they can't even get a hand on him. Looks like a young Steve Berline out there very, using his feet. Very similar, yes, very similar athletic ability. Uh, he's got a little growing up to do still, though, to catch me. This is third and four, Newton from the shotgun. It's caught as Newton again uses his tight end. That's Jeremy Shockey for a pickup of six and another Panthers first down. And that's the 124th consecutive game that Jeremy Shockey has caught a pass in the regular season. What a great pickup for this Carolina Panthers franchise. You got two great tight ends. They traded for Greg Olson from Chicago. Jeremy Shockey obviously came to fame at the University of Miami and then with the New York Giants onto the New Orleans Saints and now here in Carolina showing he still has some life left. Well, reunited here with Rob Chusinski. Two of those teaming for a national championship at Miami back in 2001. Here's Newton on first and ten. Play action. Hit as he throws, nearly picked off. As Newton dodges a bullet there, that's the outside linebacker Daryl Smith had it fall right off of his fingertips. And that's the first time the Jaguars defense has been able to really stay disciplined in their lanes. You know, we talked about the keys to containing Cam Newton. You've got to keep him in the pocket. And that means there's got to be lane discipline by the front four of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Right there, Cam Newton wanted to bounce it. He had nowhere to go. And they end up making a good, solid stop defensively. This is second and ten. From just outside the Jaguars, 41. Newton. Pocket squeezes around him. That throw is overthrown. Intended for Legadu Nene, the former San Diego Charger, and it'll be third and ten. Well, that right there, Spiro, is the is the knock on Cam Newton. You're going to see Legadu Nene coming across the middle of the field. He's going to come in the middle here. It's going to be wide open. Cam Newton's got to make this throw, but the accuracy is going to be the question mark. Look at the middle of the field, wide open. He's got to make that throw. It doesn't get any easier. In the, than that in the NFL, but Cam Newton, for all the great things he's done, he's got to get a little bit more accurate with the football. So there is a chick in the armor, at least early in Newton's career. This is third and ten. Newton again, bullet throw, nearly picked off a second time. Intended receiver is Olsen, the tight end at the 30, and the Panthers drive stalls, they'll be forced to punt. And I think those last two plays are a reminder that we are still dealing with a rookie here. It is not that easy to play quarterback in the NFL, and Cam Newton has made it look very easy, and his development truly is astonishing. But every once in a while, he's going to make a decision or a throw, you're going to say, oh, he still has some learning and some growing up to do. Jason Baker, 11th-year veteran out of Iowa. And Cecil Shorts. 
Fourth round, rookie fielding at his own 10. And that's where Jacksonville will take over. 31 yards punt as the rookie Blaine Gabbert takes the field as an NFL starter for the first time when we come back. Carolina stalls on their first drive, and now Jacksonville takes over for the first time. First and 10 from their own 10. Land Gabbard keeps it on the ground on his first play. Maurice Jones drew ahead for three yards. And there is the 10th overall selection in April's NFL Draft. Blaine Gabbard had a little cup of coffee late last weekend against the Jets. You see his numbers there. But today, his NFL debut as a starting quarterback. He is the third starter for the Jaguars in the last 15 days. <laughs> That's a little bit of instability right there. This is second and seven from the 13-yard line. Gabbard play action. Slings it middle. It's caught at the 29-yard line. That's Jason Hill. A pickup of 17 yards and a pretty good start, but there is a marker down. The face. Number 75, offense. At the distance of the goal, repeat second down. Well, that's a little bit unfortunate right there. And Steve, let's take a look at the starters around Gabbard today. Eugene Monroe is just penalized, headlines the front. One of two bookend tackles, Evan Britton, the other, whom the Jaguars are hoping will produce for this team for a long time to come. Jack Del Rio has talked about getting the receiving uh, guys going today. Jason Hill among those players, and also Mike Thomas, whose 11 receptions lead the Jaguars through the first two weeks of the season. Jack Del Rio on happy pace in the sidelines. Penalty negates a 17-yard hookup, and it's now second and 14 from the six. This is Maurice Jones. Drew barely past the line of scrimmage as he picks up maybe a half yard. Take a look at the starters defensively for Ron Rivera's Panthers. Hampered by injuries, but Charles Johnson is healthy. He tries to pick up the slack. 11 and a half sacks a year ago already. Two here in 2011. The linebacking core ravaged by the loss of both John Beeson and Thomas Davis. Omar Gaither, the Charlotte native, takes over for the injured Davis. The secondary, Chris Gamble, a late scratch with an ankle. And so Jordan Hugh, the Panthers' six-round pick from 2010, makes the start. Gabbard will work from the shotgun on third and 14 from the seventh. Gabbard, eluding tacklers, but he's tripped up and set in the end zone for the safety. It was Greg Hardy who tripped him up, and it's two to nothing, Carolina. It couldn't be a more difficult situation for Blaine Gabbard to start out his first drive as the starting quarterback in the NFL right there you're backed up in your own end zone a little bit of pressure from the outside he's got to find a way to get that ball out of there the NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest Airlines find our fares online only at southwest.com Sprint all football no limits only from Sprint and by Bud Light, the official beer sponsor of the NFL. Here we go. Well, here in Charlotte, the story around this Panthers team, in addition to Cam Newton, has been the injuries sustained by their defense, but so far, good start. As Greg Hardy with a sack of Blaine Gabbard in the end zone, a safety to make it 2-0 Carolina. Matt Turcon to punt it away for Jacksonville. Panthers fielding from their own 29-yard line. And so excellent field position for Carolina. Or Monty Edwards with a minimal return. We take another look at the safety. Well, it, it's a tough spot for any quarterback to be in. Right there you see Greg Car Hardy coming off the edge. And then Terrell McClain jumps on top to finish it off. Lane Gabbert, a very good athlete. I think he really felt like he had a running lane right there to get out of the end zone. But he's going to find out very quickly, as he did on that play, that those gaps are closed much more quickly at this level than they are in college. So he got caught off guard with that one. A bad decision probably to hang on to the football, but we'll see how he bounces back. And Greg Hardy coincidentally accounting for the last Panthers safety, September 12th of 2010. He blocked the punt against the Giants. Matt Dodge out of the back of the end zone. So Cam Newton and company onto the field from their own 30. Newton from the shotgun. Draw play give to D'Angelo Williams up the middle. And picks up three yards with 7.21 to play in the first. 
A little bit of good and bad from Cam Newton so far today. Right there, the first play of the game. Look at how slippery he is. Makes a nice throw to pick up a nice chunk on first down. And then the straight design quarterback counter up inside. He can run the ball anytime on the football field. But how frustrating would it be to try and tackle this guy? You see him standing there. He's a big target. You think I got a good shot at him. And then he just slithers his way right out of there. Now, he walked into our meeting room yesterday. It was the first time I had seen him in person. He's listed at 6'5", 244. He seems like he's 6'8". Some of the biggest hands, Steve, I've ever seen. They're almost Michael Jordan-esque. There is Newton on second and seven. Airs it out down the sideline a little bit too far in front of Steve Smith. It'll be third down. You know what it was on that one right there, Spiro? It was a little bit of pressure from Austin Lane, number 92. Got up in the face of Cam Newton right as he was letting go of that ball. These are the throws that Cam Newton has been making the first two weeks of the NFL. He and Steve Smith have been hooking up quite a bit. Good touch on that pass. He had a chance to make the completion. I think if he didn't have the hand in his face, that ball would have been caught by Steve Smith. Well, we mentioned Newton today trying to become the first quarterback to throw for 400 plus in three straight games. Tom Brady could do it as well today. With the Patriots playing at Buffalo against the upstart Bills. This is Newton on third and seven. Pocket again collapses. He's hit as he throws. He completes to the tight end Greg Olson for a Carolina first down. I would mention Michael Jordan here are some of the athletic heroes that Newton looked up to as a kid. And he talked in our meeting extensively, surprisingly, about Muhammad Ali. You don't expect a 21 year old kid to go that far back. Everything that he said to very well thought out, very well presented to us. I mean, he's a very thoughtful, reflective, intelligent young man that, that expresses himself very well. Pick up a 13 yards. This is first and 10. They keep it on the ground. First rush of the afternoon for Jonathan Stewart. Picks up two yards and second and eight coming up. But that, that has been kind of the way the Panthers running game has looked all, all year so far, the first two weeks of the season. And we're not used to seeing that. Both Jonathan Stewart and D'Angelo Williams average over four and a half yards a carry for their career this year both of them at two and a half yards or less it's just not something that this carolina panthers organization is accustomed to and they know they've got to get that figured out early offensive numbers so far in the game two nothing panthers a safety by greg hardy the difference with five and change left in the quarter newton rolling out he's chased by mincy and newton lunges forward inside jaguars territory to the 47. Well, here is the tandem that they have nicknamed Double Trouble, but uh, they have not lived up to that moniker so far through two weeks. And D'Angelo Williams just coming into this year signed a new $41 million extension. He's going to be here for a long time. Both of these guys, first-round draft choices. In back, and Jonathan Stewart was in 2008 and D'Angelo Williams in 2007. They are going to be set at running back if these guys stay healthy for a lot of years. But they've got to find a way to get them on track to take some of this pressure off of Cam Newton. Newton from the shotgun on third and four from the Jaguars 47. Newton's throw again sailing a bit high. Steve Smith trying to climb the ladder. The five foot nine inch receiver. It's incomplete and Carolina will punt. Really good coverage by Rasheen Mathis right there on Steve Smith. Just tight, tight, tight coverage. Not giving Cam Newton that back shoulder, a clean view of that back shoulder to throw that football. That's what the quarterback is looking for. Just some piece of that chest to stick that football on. Good coverage by Rasheen Mathis. Well, Newton so far just three of nine throwing for 26 yards. Jason Baker on punts. He's from shorts standing at his own seven. Signals for the fair catch. And falls backwards to the four-yard line. So once again, Blaine Gabbard and company pin deep inside their own territory. A 2-0 lead for the Panthers here in Charlotte. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Oh, here in Charlotte before the game, the Panthers honored Andrea Bazan, one of North Carolina's leading advocates for Hispanic and Latino causes as part of the NFL's Hispanic Heritage Month as its club honors the contributions of their Hispanic fans, players, and community. Here in Charlotte, Spiro Dita, Steve Berline, our entire CBS crew with you. Second week in a row that Jacksonville has given up a safety on their opening possession. Last week it was Muhammad Wilkerson of the Jets dumping Luke McCown in the end zone. Today, Greg Hardy sacking Blaine Gabbard, and that's where we stand now. 2-0 Carolina. 
as Gabbert and company once again trying to get out from deep in their own territory. Jacksonville Premier see some of the high-priced free agent acquisitions. Drew Coleman, their nickelback, who Jack Del Rio is hoping will really bolster that defensive secondary. A lot of significant moves on there. You look at Paul Pozlesny, the draft choice out of Penn State about three years ago coming here. You really have solidified the middle of their defense with Paul Pozlesny. Some good moves by the Jaguars organization. Jones drew no gain on first down, so it's second and ten. Gabbard completes to Hill again. Second reception for Jason Hill. Picks up five as he's forced out of bounds at the ten. Well, we did speak to Jack Del Rio quite a bit yesterday, and he said the keys he believes to success today against the Panthers, you got to keep your third downs in manageable situations. Make some explosive plays. There hasn't been a lot of things to be excited about in terms of big plays so far this year. And then, boy, it would be sure nice to get a lead and play with the lead a little bit. Jack Del Rio football teams here in Jacksonville are in Jacksonville. 44 and 11 when they score first. So he would like to get on the board first today, obviously. Pressure spot here for the rookie quarterback on third and fourth play action. And he is dumped once again, sacked at the eight. And Jacksonville will punt. Could not be a more difficult start to this game for Blaine Gabbert, the rookie, starting on his 10-yard line on the first drive, and that last, this, this last drive started at the 5-yard line in a, in a way stadium, a loud crowd, a lot of action going on. It's tough to drop back into your own end zone and feel confident throwing that football out of there. Charles Johnson with sack number three on the young season as he beat Eugene Monroe in a tough start for the Jacksonville tackle a penalty early negating a 17-yard pass play and there gets up the sack here's Almonte Edwards fielding inside Jaguars territory as Carolina not only winning on the scoreboard but the early field position battle a 40-yard point here in Charlotte timeout the NFL on CBS is sponsored by E-Trade Investing Unleashed. And by Chrysler. Imported from Detroit. Here in Jacksonville, uh, Charlotte rather, the Jacksonville defense back onto the field to try to slow down Cam Newton and company as the Panthers have the early 2-0 lead. First and 10. In goes play action, finds D'Angelo Williams out of the backfield. He's inside the 40 and has enough for the Carolina first down, a pickup of 11. Tonight on CBS, former NFL coach player Marcus Pollard competes on The Amazing Race, plus survivor winners Ethan and Jenna. Don't miss the season premiere of The Amazing Race tonight after 60 minutes, only on CBS. That was a nice little change of pace by Rob Chudzinski right there. The screen pass to D'Angelo Williams. You know, every one of these guys, from a confidence standpoint, they need to get the ball in their hands with some open field once in a while, get some of those easy yards. Jordan once again fakes the handoff. This is first and ten. Airs are out. And it's incomplete. Has not been able to locate Steve Smith. A couple of badly overthrown passes in this first quarter. Yeah, and, and you know, this is something that we have not seen on film the first two weeks, Spiro. He's been completing over 62% of his passes, and when guys are open down the field, he's been putting them on them. Today, for whatever reason, a little bit high, a little bit off with his deliveries. He's got to get that straightened out because when those guys are open, when there's a place to put that football at the field, you've got to take advantage of it. So he's thrown to Smith four times, and so far they have not been able to hook up. Jonathan Stewart on second and ten, dancing through the Jacksonville defense. He's got the first down as he's brought down at the 25-yard line, but not before he picks up 13. Uh, this is what Ron Rivera wants to see, and this is what these people here in Carolina are used to seeing. Nothing fancy here, just a straight. Hey, look at that hole. Look at the movement off the right side of that offensive line. Jonathan Stewart not used to seeing that this year. Probably was surprised, thought he was dreaming a little bit, but Ron Rivera... I think he would love to see a lot more of that to take a little bit of the pressure like we've been saying off of Cam Newton. Stewart coming into today, we told you earlier, averaging just over two yards per carry after rushing better than 1,100 last season. Here he is on first down. Not much room to maneuver, just inside the 25 after a minimal game. Let's go to New York and an update.
with James Brown. Houston looking to go 3-0 and for the first time, Coach. And how about this uh, little bit of balance? Five passes, four rushes. Owen Daniels, 14 yards. New Orleans are on their heels on defense. That's the running game playing a part of the offense. And you like that, Steve Spiro. Oh, Coach loving balance. Back to Spiro and Steve. One of the games up on the NFL marquee here in week three and a fast start for the Texans. Boy, they are looking good. I mean, that, that, that Matt Schaub and all the weapons they've got there, they're playing some good football down there. Second and nine, Newton again working from the shotgun. Near side finds Williams. Williams head on collision at the 20 and forced out of bounds by Derek Cox. About five yards on the hookup between Newton and Williams. You know, last week, that was D'Angelo Williams right there, but last week, Jonathan Stewart had eight catches for 100 yards. That's not something you're used to seeing this out of any running back, the end of the first specifically quarter. here in Carolina. They're using the running backs a lot of different ways today. Well, look, Greg Hardy, safety, the difference. End of one in Charlotte. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Back with you from downtown Charlotte, Cam Newton and the Panthers have it. As we begin the second quarter, a 2-0 lead, a Greg Hardy sack of Blaine Gabbard in the end zone. A safety has been the difference. This is third and three. Newton from the shotgun, tucks it away. Going to find some real estate on the outside. He's flipped up about a yard and a half short of the first down marker. Oh, that's a super job by the Jacksonville defense right there. You're going to see the key to this play was Rasheen Mathis, number 27, coming off the corner. You're going to see him stick his nose up in there and just cause a little bit of pro right, right there. And he, oh, boy, that was a little bit of a low block by Legadu Nene right there behind Rasheen Mathis. But that is what stretched the play out and kept Cam Newton from being able to turn that corner. This is Olindo Mare, 19th in NFL history in points scored. Pro Bowler back in 2009. He'll try from 35 yards out. Mari's kick is up and through the uprights. So the Panthers with an early safety and a 35-yard field goal from Olindo Mare have a 5-0 lead. Panthers scoring drive, seven plays, 32 yards, capped off by a 35-yard field goal by Olindo Mare to give the Panthers a 5 to nothing lead. Early second quarter here in Charlotte. Week 3, Panthers, Jaguars, Spiro Vita, Steve Berline, our entire CBS crew with you. As Mare's kick boots its way through the back of the end zone. And Blaine Gabbard and company will have it first and 10 from the 20 when we come back. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Five nothing Panthers early stages of the second quarter as Blaine Gabbert and the Jacksonville offense trying to get themselves going first and ten from the twenty. That's Maurice Jones drew up the middle for a pickup of two yards. You mentioned Blaine Gabbert, the twenty-one year old rookie today making his first NFL start. His father and middle brother in attendance today, Chuck and Tyler Gabbert making the trek from Missouri. And so far. Much, much to cheer about <laughs> as uh, Gabbert has been beaten up, sacked early in the game. Has just not been given the protection that he'll need so far. This is second and seven. Gabbert near side. That's his second completion right at the first down marker at the 30. Mercedes Lewis with the catch. There you, there you see the quarterback selected in the first 12 picks this year. Blaine Gabbert was the third quarterback pick, 10th pick overall. Jack Del Rio and the Jaguars decided to trade up from the 16th spot to get their man, and it's been all positive. They've been just waiting for the right time, and they think that the time is now for Blaine Gabbert. Taking over for Luke McCown. This is third and one. There's inches to go. Jones Drew won't get it. Charles Johnson got there first, a loss of yardage at the 25-yard line. Uh, Charles Johnson was shot out of a cannon off the right side of the Panthers defense right there. You can see just a, a missed block. I believe it was Mercedes Lewis who was trying to just hook him to the outside, but he didn't have any help from the inside. And Charles Johnson said, thank you very much. I'll go this way up and inside and make the play for a four-yard loss. Johnson already is sacked. 
And a tackle for a loss on that play. That's going to, I believe this is going to go on the Panthers. That's going to give Jacksonville a first down. Bill Levy is our referee. And you can see the reaction from the Jaguars oh. players. Their offense coming on the field. Neutral zone infraction. Defense came into the neutral zone, caused the offense to fall start. Five-yard penalty results in a first down. And that is Jacksonville's first first down of this first half. And that was off the left side. It was Thomas Williams, number 56, the linebacker. You're going to see him off the left side right there. He just leaned over the line. And, uh, and that was what caused the flag to go up in the air. Fourth and four. Boy, you got him in a good situation. You're going to get good field position again. Instead, you give Jacksonville a whole new set of downs. So Gabbard, another shot. First and 10 from the 31. Play action incomplete. Tended receiver Mike Thomas takes a wallop at the 47. This is Jacksonville offense now in nine plus quarters so far through week three has produced just one touchdown and four field goals. Well, you're going to see Mike Thomas coming across the middle of the field. This ball is a little bit late. That ball has got to be thrown right into this spot here from Blaine Gabbert. He waits a little bit too long and runs Mike Thomas all the way across the field into a collision. That's why that ball wasn't completed. Second and ten, they keep it on the ground up the middle. Up to the 32-yard line with Maurice Jones-Drew. Back to New York and an update with J.B. Eli Manning, big first half, coach. Yeah, I'll tell you what, what the vaunted uh, Philadelphia secondary. Six touchdowns, last five quarters. Shabby tackling right here. And you're going to see Victor Cruz, who came out of nowhere, is activated this week, and he's 74 yards for a touchdown. 14 nothing Giants, J.B. 4-7, 128 yards and two touchdowns for Manning. Back to Spiro and Steve. Looked like a couple of kickers trying to make tackles there. They weren't trying to hit him. This is third and eight. Gabbard again feeling the pressure. Completes over the middle right at the first down marker. That's Mike Thomas with the catch and enough for the Jacksonville first down. And that's a big completion for Blaine Gabbard right there to, to move the change with a nice solid throw over the middle of the field. Mike Thomas that time finding a just, just a soft spot in the zone defense and knowing that he's got to catch that ball and turn and get that extra yard to convert the third down. See Gabbard's numbers early on, three for four. Had a 17-yard pass play negated with a penalty early in the game. Here he is on first and ten. Gabbard this time has time, and it's broken up. Jason Hill, the intended receiver, Captain Munnerlin all over him with the coverage. You know, that was a great job, not only by Captain Munnerlin, but by Jason Hill to fight for this football. This ball would have been intercepted if Jason Hill did not go after it the way. Look at that right there. I mean, they could have they could have possibly thrown a flag right there, you know, face mask on Jason Hill defending against Captain Munnerlin, but that's what you want out of your receiver. The quarterback wants a receiver that's not going to just give up that easy interception. Second and ten, here's Gabbard from the shotgun. Jones drew the catch. Inside Panthers territory, a first down and much more. Finally brought down at the 32 after a pickup of 25 yards. I want you to watch something on this play. This, this, is, this play should have been hit for about a five or six yard gain. Watch the little shuffle step from Maurice Jones do right there. Boom. Just a little. He knew exactly. He knew exactly where the pressure was coming from, from James Anderson. It was almost like he had eyes on the side of his head. And the shuffle like that and turn what would have been a five-yard gain into about a 25-yard gain. Great job. Ninth play of the drive for Jacksonville. Thomas dumped down right after the catch. He loses yardage at the 36-yard line. Jordan Pugh making the start today at the safety position with the tackle. Yeah, I'm afraid it did happen, Jack Del Rio. Let's listen to this. Just a great job by Jordan Pugh. He knew that ball was coming. That's excellent preparation and scouting from the defensive staff led by Sean McDermott, the defensive coordinator. There was no doubt in Jordan Pugh's mind where that ball was going. See the offensive drought for Jacksonville. Second and 11 now from the 35. Keep it on the ground, but nowhere to maneuver up front. First 
rush on the day for Daisy Kareem, the second-year man out of Southern Illinois. You mentioned the drought that this Jaguars offense has been experiencing since Spiro. And last week against the New York Jets, they only got inside the Jets' 30-yard line one time in the whole game. And this year, they've only been in the red zone one time in two games. That was against Tennessee in week one. They have not had many scoring opportunities. Maurice Jones drew seven rushes for just six yards so far. This is third and 11. Lane Gabbert's got to be careful here. Penalty markers fly before the snap. Ball start. Number 84 offense. Five yard penalty. Third down. That's Cecil Shorts, the rookie wide receiver. And that's a big penalty right there. You're. You're in field goal range. I was just about to say, Blaine Gabbard has to understand the 35-yard line with a kicker like Josh Stobie. He can make a 53-yarder. You can't take a sack. You don't want to force the football because you need points. And then Cecil Shorts jumps offside. Well, Stobie hit a 55-yarder last week, hit a 59-yarder week four last season. But now they're out of his range on third and 16. Gabbard rolls out, throws sideline. It's caught, but well short of the first down marker Kareem with the catch but that is going to make this a 53 or 54 yard field goal for Josh Scobie I think Jack Del Rio has plenty of confidence in Josh Scobie to make this kick from this distance that, that's a that's a big five yard completion by playing Gabba right there that's knowing the situation and understanding kind of a veteran move on his part this officially will be a from 53 yards his career long 59 as we mentioned Try to cut into this five-point Jacksonville deficit. It has plenty of distance, and it's good. And Jacksonville is on the board. Now at five to three, favoring the Carolina Panthers. Well, it took them some time, but they finally able are to break through on the scoreboard. 53-yarder from Scobie, timeout. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by KFC Popcorn Chicken. Today tastes so good. The new 70-inch class LCD TV from Sharp. And by Toyota. Well, Josh Scobie's 53-yard field goal has the Jaguars on the board for the first time today. The scoring drive, 12 plays, 45 yards in just over six and a half minutes. It's baseball score so far with the Panthers in front, 5-3. to Spiro Dita, Steve Berline, our entire CBS crew from Charlotte. Bank of America Stadium, week three. Uh, Scobie's kick is fielded by Goodson in the back of the end zone and a touchback for Cam Newton and the Panthers when we come back. Well, some rain starting to trickle down here in Charlotte. Doesn't figure to help either of these two offenses that have been unable to get off the ground so far in this first half. Cam Newton and Carolina have it first and 10. They take over from their own 20. Newton again too high with the throw. And what is going on with Newton today? That's about the fifth or sixth time he's overthrown his target. Uh, th th this is uh, baffling here. You're going to see Jeremy Shockey right here at the top of the route right here he's gonna go right to actually using the inside receiver he just sits down on the 30-yard line look at the lane there's nobody obstructing Cam Newton's view Shockey could not possibly be more open there was no pressure on Cam Newton he's got to make that throw is why that you can't pass up yards like that see Newton's numbers just 5 to 13 so far in this first half so short hookup with the tight end Jeremy Shockey for a pickup of eight yards Coming up on the Sprint Halftime Report, you can join JB, Dan Shannon, Boomer, and Coach Cower for all the latest NFL scores and highlights. Week three around the NFL. It's all coming up on the Sprint Halftime Report. You know, Rob Chudzinski told us that every week is a learning experience for Cam Newton. He's going to see different coverages. He's going to see different matchups. And it's hard to keep your poise and your confidence when you're seeing different things every week. Newton works from the shotgun on third and two. Jacksonville coming. Newton's throw is caught at the 40 late marker thrown. <laughs> Legadu Nene with the reception. And this one apparently against the Jacksonville defense. I'm interested to see what that penalty call is. That was a good play by Dwight Lowry. Just missed the ball. 
personal foul. Face mask, number 25 defense. Huh. 15 yards from the end of the run. First down. Well, I, I don't know how he got a face mask out of that. I want to see this myself because he was breaking on the football right there. Hmm. Maybe after the fact. Yeah, he's hanging on it after the fact a little bit. Looked to me like he might have just gotten his finger caught in there incidentally, but uh, it definitely was latched on. Dwight Lowry's hand was definitely on the face mask or in the face mask of Lega Dudene. So 13 yards on the catch, 15 more on the penalty. And now Newton and company at the Jacksonville 44 on first and 10. Olsen in motion. The gift to Jonathan Stewart. Near side, inside the 40. Has the first down and more at the 32-yard line. 12 yards on the run from Jonathan Stewart. Now the, the Panthers are finding some money here on the right side behind Jonathan Ota, or Jeff Ota, and uh, Jeff Hangardner, the right guard. Jonathan Stewart, another nice lane to take it up inside. And that is exactly what the Panthers need at this point. Jacksonville is a very difficult team to run the football on, but we've seen some signs of life out of this Panthers offense. Stewart now 29 yards on four rushes today. This is first and 10. Stewart again to feature back, breaks a couple of tackles. Marker is thrown as Stewart is forced out of bounds after another first down run. At the Jacksonville 16, will check on a penalty. 15 yard rush. He'll leave the block in the back. Number 89 offense. 10 yard penalty. Repeat first down. That's Steve Smith, the culprit. Boy, that's, that's a back breaker for the Carolina Panthers to block in the back that really breaks their back. They get some momentum going, some rhythm going in that running game. And Steve Smith, you got to love the effort up the field, fighting and trying to help his teammate out downfield making those blocks. You don't want to ever discourage that because that's what makes the big plays pop. But Steve Smith right there hurt the Panthers with a big penalty. We talked with Ron Rivera yesterday, really trying to temper the enthusiasm around here with the play of Cam Newton. This is still an all-in-two Panthers team trying to break through today in a huge uh, importance on this game with Carolina facing three straight playoff teams after today over the next three weeks. Newton goes play action, finds the tight end. Olsen was tripped up right after the catch at the 39-yard line. Let's go back to New York, get an update with James Brown. Saints have narrowed the gap, coach. Even the Saints got to run the ball every now and then, don't they, Steve? Here's Darren Spools, maybe the best free agent acquisition in the offseason. Goes 30 yards, and New Orleans is finally now getting uncranked. All right, 10-7, it is. Back to Spiro and Steve. You know what, of course, I've got Darren Sproles on my fantasy team. I didn't play him today. Nice run by the little man down in New Orleans. Second and 18. Newton barely evading the set. Finds Stewart somehow acrobatically able to get it away. But Stewart, with no room to maneuver, brought down at the 35-yard line. And it will be third and long coming up. Now, Spiro, if you're human, this is a 20-yard loss for, for a normal quarterback. Right there, Cam Newton sometimes gives the impression that he's superhuman. Uh, to find a way to get that ball off accurately, there aren't many guys in the league that can do that, even at this level. Did a great job of getting back some yards on that play. Newton on third and 15. Oh, he has just been off so far in his first half. Well, I'm not going to put that one on Cam Newton. I don't know whose fault that was, but it was a miscommunication. It looked to me like Cam Newton was expecting Steve Smith to sit down over the ball, and Steve Smith read it as a route where we were supposed to keep, keep moving, and that makes a big difference. If that ball is completed, it's just a five- or six-yard pickup. It's still fourth down, but I guarantee you that Ron Rivera would go for the field goal in that situation if they pick up that five to six yards. That's the fifth time today that Newton has targeted Smith, and they have yet to hook up. I'm kind of surprised even now. I mean, it would only be a 53-yarder for Alindo Mora. I think he's got that in his range as well. Instead, Jason Baker standing at midfield to punt. As we get a penalty marker back at the Jacksonville end zone. Play a game. 
Offense, five-yard penalty, hmm. fourth down. They'll give Baker five more yards, a little more room to work with. See the rain starting to come down a little bit harder now. And maybe that was the deciding factor for Ron Rivera, right on the borderline of Mare's distance or his range and the moisture and just the, the possibility of something bad happening. End over end kick from Baker. Bear catch signaled by Shorts. But the Carolina punt team unable to down it. There is a marker back at the 47. Holding number 54 of the kicking team. 10 yard penalty will be enforced from the 20 yard line. First down. So Blaine Gabbard and company will have the 10 yards tacked on. They'll have it at the 30 yard line when we come back. A two point game in Charlotte. You're watching the NFL on CBS. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by FedEx. FedEx does more than shipping. FedEx, solutions that matter. And by Frost Brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Well, we were told the weather would hold up today. It hasn't been the case. Rain starting to come down a little bit harder now. As Blaine Gabbert, the rookie quarterback, his first NFL start taking over from the 30 on first and 10. Incomplete. That was Chris Gamble on the coverage. And it will be second and 10 for the Jaguars. The NFL celebrates Hispanic Heritage Month. Visit the official Spanish language home of the NFL at NFL.com slash Espanol for game highlights, fantasy football, and a look at your team's Hispanic Heritage Month celebration. Panthers 5, Jaguars 3. Boy, Jason Hill had it right in his breadbasket and some open real estate to maneuver. Yeah, that was going to be a nice game there, Spiro. That ball's right on the money from Blaine Gabbard. A good job on the release by Jason Hill. He just took his eyes off it. Captain Munderland was, was beaten on the play, and it would have been a big pickup. You, know, you look at the stat sheet so far, 44 total yards of offense. You figure that it's on the rookie Gabbard. They haven't helped him much. No, they have not. I mean, you're looking at Mo Maurice Jones, Drew, six carries for seven yards. It's just not cutting it. Shoddy pass protection early, leading to a Panthers safety. And now it's third and ten from the 30. Gabbert throwing a wet ball. It's incomplete. Trying to find Thomas at the 40. And the Jaguars will punt. Well, that was a just that was a case of a young player making a mistake, not reading the cover. I want you to watch right here. Darius Butler, he kind of baited. Blaine Gabbard into throwing this ball. You see, he's kind of showing him a soft look, but watch, he squats because he knows he's got a little bit of help over the top. He baits him into that throw on the outside. Gabbard thought he had him wide open. So Gabbard now 6 of 11 for 48 yards as markers fly all over the place. There's Bill Levy. Ball start. Number 48 of the offense. Five-yard penalty. Fourth down. Jeremy Kane on the penalty. You know, I talked about Darius Butler. I, it looked to me initially like he had help over the top on that rubble. When we looked at that replay, I think that was just a gamble by Darius Butler. Mike observed by Dirk Cutter a little later in the game. Well, Monty Edwards fielding at his own 27 makes the first couple of guys miss and lunges forward to the Panthers 34. Well, before there was Cam Newton, there was Steve Berline here in Charlotte, the last Panther to have consecutive 300-yard pass games. 1999, Steve's Pro Bowl year, he threw for 373 yards, and a game-winning score as time expired at Green Bay. Then six days later, 368 in a win over the San Francisco 49ers. Did, did you see me soar into the end zone I there? I mean, I did. Cam Newton's got nothing on me, I'm telling you. You can't coach that kind of running <laughs> ability. Now the rain really starting to come down now. Marker is throwing. The Fishers offsetting personal fouls. Number 57 and number 33. Penalties offset. First down. So the penalties offset. And Newton and company will have it first and 10. They will spot it at the 34-yard line. Newton so far today just 9 for 18 if you've just joined us. And he's never 
seem to me from up here gotten comfortable down the field and uh, very confident we talked to him yesterday and he's been very consistent the first few weeks of the season today just a little bit out of sync a lot of moisture on that football as they find steve smith for the first time today sixth time they targeted smith and the first reception for the 11th year veteran out of bounds after a pickup of two yards you can manage all of your cbs sports fantasy football teams on your mobile device just download the free app today at cbsports.com slash mobile Well, we know that the, it's raining, it's causing the football to be a little bit slippery, but I put my hand up to Cam Newton's yesterday, <laughs> and I've got decent-sized hands, but his fingers were literally an inch and a half longer than mine. I don't think the rain affects him very much out there. I go draw play to Jonathan Stewart. So it looks like Carolina will go the safe route here, and it is pouring. Now at Bank of America Stadium, a pickup of two. Well, we've seen we've seen some good and bad today. You know, a couple of nice passes. We've seen a lot of good movement from Cam Newton today. But where he's really been a little bit off has been the up the field throws. He's had some chances to make plays up the field. It just hasn't happened. They have not been on the same page. And if they want to really get control of this ball game, he's got to start hitting some of those throws. And it's not, it's not getting any easier out here, Sparrow. Sorry about that. Losing in week one in Arizona. Lost here to Green Bay last week here on third down. It's nearly intercepted off the hands of the third string running back Mike Goodson. And the Panthers will punt. Yeah, the Panthers dodged the bullet right here. Watch how easily this could have been interception off the hands of Goodson. Fell right into the lap almost of Mr. Mr. Lowry. Had a chance to make up for that face mask penalty a little bit earlier. Jack Del Rio knows when you get those opportunities to cash in, get good field position with a little bit of time left on the clock, you're going to get some points probably. Cecil Shorts back deep to return the punt from Baker. But uh, more penalties here, whistling the play dead. Ball start, number 59. Offense, five-yard penalty, fourth down. Steve, this has the feel of a preseason game right now. <laughs> Five to three Panthers. A lot of penalties. A lot of sloppy football. Uh, and not not many uh, big plays offensively. I mean, you're look, you're exactly right. You know, we're we're seeing two teams trying to figure it out out there right now, and the fans are trying to figure out if they want to sit in the seats or <laughs> take it inside. So two fourteen left to play, first half. But well, we were told it was only about a 20% chance of rain today. The clock operator put 216, 216 on the game clock. Weatherman here in Charlotte's fired. Thank you. <laughs> Not only is it raining, it is coming down a torrential downpour, it seems like here. And Spaker will stand at his own 19 to punt it away. Short kick fielded by Shorts, and he is buried by Captain Munnerlyn at the 34-yard line after just a 28-yard punt. Oh, one of the themes in the NFL this week has been defenses faking injuries. Here's was the Giants' safety, Deion Grant, in a Monday night game at the Meadowlands last weekend, hitting the turf in apparent pain. The NFL sending a memo to all 32 teams on Wednesday warning of fine suspensions and a loss of draft picks if the NFL front office determines that the injuries were faked. But, uh, Steve, this I, I don't know how you seems can, to be common practice in the NFL or has been for many years. Well, I don't think there's ever been a more blatant example of faking. I mean, Williams thought that he was getting the signal to take a dive, and they both fell down. And then Williams realized it wasn't he that was supposed to do it, so he gets back up. Charles Johnson, it looked like, left early. Yep. Gabbert fumbles the snap. You know, you, as a marker was thrown at the 34-yard line, the pylon is suing at the 22. And now the question was Johnson drawn off sides. I, that, that, is, that is a good question because it looked to me like Johnson is the one that jumped. But if he was drawn off sides, that would definitely be a live ball then. Offside. 
Defense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat first down. The clock needs to run to two minutes. This will be the two-minute warning on the game clock. No doubt about it. The number was 95. Now the rain continues to come down as we reach the two-minute warning here in Charlotte. Time out. Panthers and Jaguars playing in a downpour here in Charlotte. 5-3 lead for the Panthers, which is two minutes left before halftime. Gabbert the give to Maurice Jones. Drew out past the 44, chopped down at the 45-yard line as Jacksonville picks up a first down. Coming up to Sprint Halftime Report, JB, Dan Shannon, Boomer, and Coach Cower in studio with all the scores and highlights. Week three around the NFL. Yeah, it's all on the Sprint Halftime Report. Timeout, Time Carolina, their first. Panthers will burn their first of three timeouts with a buck 47 to play in their second quarter. And that, that was a timeout. That was a timeout because of the injury on the field right there, Spiro. They were charged. Let's talk about strength of schedule right here. These two teams coming off of uh, very average years. How about getting the first and third toughest schedule in the NFL? This is not fair. Really, Panthers wouldn't. just 2-14 and 14 a year ago. Jacksonville, of course, missing the playoffs for a third straight year. Right. And you'd figure that, that there would be some kind of uh, comfort in, in your schedule the next season, but not to be. The problem you got, obviously, is divisional games. When you got the NFC South, where you've got Tampa Bay, Atlanta, and a team called New Orleans in your division, that's six games right there. That's kind of tough. Well, the Panthers will face three playoff teams in succession over the next three weeks. Here's Gabbert. Too far in front, and it's intercepted. That's Sherrod Martin, the safety on the pick. Martin still looking for some yardage there, out past the 35 and brought down at the 37. As Gabbert throws the first pick of his NFL career. Uh, that's going to be a little bit of teaching reel for Blaine Gabbert right there. You're going to see he pumps hard to the right. It pulls the safety over there, over the top. Sherrod Martin, he's being pulled that way by the quarterback. And then in these conditions, the ball kind of flutters out there. It's about an easy, as easy an interception as you're ever going to see. Sherrod Martin could have fair caught that thing, I think, and been absolutely fine. But Blaine Gabbert... Got to make sure that one of the things that those safeties are doing, they're always reading your eyes. And if you're going to throw it right, you better be doing something to hold that safety. We'll see if Rob Jasinski and the Panthers offense take a shot here. Newton from the shotgun on first and ten. Newton's receiver is covered. Had time. It's incomplete. Off the hands of Jonathan Stewart. It'll be second and ten. Now this is one of the things I, I truly love about football, about the game of football. I mean, what? <laughs> What other sport would you see guys out there, grown men out there, sloshing around, rolling around in the mud, trying to find a way to move the ball? That's one of the things that's so great about this sport. You play no matter what the conditions might be, pretty much, and you just go out there and you find a way to do the best you can. Well, even if the rain stops, you wonder what condition the field will be in in the second half. As more penalty markers fly. Ball start, number 67 offense, five-yard penalty, second down. I think these two teams will just want a do-over after a very sloppily played first half. And now even sloppier with this weather as the heavens have opened up here in downtown Charlotte. Look at the water now coming into Bank of America Stadium. It's draining from the top level onto the bottom level all the way around this stadium. That field got absolutely soaked pretty quickly. This is second and 15 from the Panthers 34. Well, despite the rain, they're going to the air again. Short screen pass to Stewart. Brought down at the original line of scrimmage. Stewart says he's still up. No inside whistle. Jaguars territory to the 20. Brought down inside the 10. No whistle was blown. And Carolina will have it first and goal after a 61-yard play. Timeout. Carolina. Well, we've got to see this. Screen pass to the left side. He was drilled. Oh, my goodness. Flipped over the top. The question is, did any part of his body hit the ground? That's incredible balance by Jonathan Stewart. 
He was drilled on that play. Yeah, it's got to be reviewed. Well, the Panthers offense that has produced just 150 yards of total offense before that hookup. And we'll take another look here. Was Stewart on the ground? That left hand is the only part of his body. Maybe the elbow is the only part of his body that hit the ground. Well, this play still under review. A 60-yard hookup between Cam Newton and Jonathan Stewart. The question, was Stewart's body on the ground? And I don't think we've seen an angle that'll overturn the call in the field, which was a complete pass. You're exactly right, Spiro. I don't think they're going to overturn. I just spoke during the break with Carl Johnson, the director of officials for the NFL, during the break, and he said other than the hand or the knee touching the ground, uh, anything else is considered down by contact if you're taken to the ground. But the question would be if his elbow hit the ground. I asked him specifically if it was his elbow, then it would be down by contact, but I didn't see an elbow hit the ground. Again, a call on the field. The runner's was left complete. elbow was down. The runner was down by contact at the 39-yard line of Carolina. Carolina's well, timeout will still be charged. They're second. Well, that was the only question, and it was clarified to me again at the break, is if his elbow hit the ground, that would be considered down by contact. I just don't know what this rain and with the, 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 the bodies that are in the way, if there's a way to tell whether that elbow hit the ground. I haven't seen an angle where it clearly shows that that elbow hit the ground. It's got to be clear to overturn it, Spiro. Remember, that's the only angle right there. From that angle, you can clearly see that his left elbow made contact with the ground. And well, Stewart stabilized himself, and so a 60-yard hookup. That's got to be the only angle that they could, could, could use. Uh, to me, it still is a little bit gray. Uh, I, I would have a hard time saying that definitively shows, but obviously the, the officials think otherwise. So I, I think it's safe to say the elbow did hit the ground. I just, I'm just not convinced that I saw it. 60-yard hookup turns into a five-yard play. As they will spot the football now way back at the Carolina 39-yard line. Well, it is a, it is a game of inches. In so many different ways. I mean, if that elbow, which I believe, if it did hit the ground, it probably just grazed the ground. That ends up being one of the highlight plays of the NFL season. Jack Del Rio and company looking on from the Jaguars sideline. As Bank of America Stadium, at this rate, is going to be completely flooded out by the time this game is over. This is third and ten. Newton from the shotgun, Olsen in motion, Newton fumbles the snap, uh -oh. he's hit from the back, still finds Olsen out of the backfield, more dangerous play by Newton there, they lose five yards and the Panthers will punt. Well, I am really surprised that Cam Newton didn't get blown up right there by Jeremy Mincy, had a clean shot at his back. 30 second timeout. Timeout Jacksonville. Cam Newton could have taken one right in the middle of that number one from behind right there from Jeremy Mincy, but showed you how big and strong he is, but also I think the fact that the field is so soggy, Mincy could not explode through his back. Steve, I'm surprised these two teams aren't just taking a knee at this point, getting out of here <laughs> and regrouping at halftime. Dangerous play by Newton there. Very dangerous. I mean, if that ball pops out, you're basically spotting Jacksonville some points because they're going to recover it inside the 30-yard line. Now, obviously, a field goal at this point is not a gimme on these field conditions, but. Jason Baker on to punt Cecil Shorts at his own 29. Baker gets off a decent kick, takes a Panthers bounce inside the 25, and down at the Jaguars 23. So 53 seconds left before half. Some amazing pictures inside the stadium. Trying to do a little bit better than that. <laughs> Panthers fans having whatever fun they can here. He's going to be shoveling water for a while, I think, to get that boat empty. Wishful thinking. As Blaine Gabbard back onto the field. And it looks like Dick Cotter and his Jaguars offense will just wave the white flag with 44 seconds left before halftime. 
I, I think that's definitely the right decision here, Spiro. You know, you, you, you could have made a case for it last, last drive with the Panthers, but with time on the clock, I think Jack Del Rio would have tried to use the timeouts and make Carolina do something with the football, see if they could handle the snap on the punt, anything like that. Now, Jack Del Rio just wanted to concede the rest of the time, I think. This will be the final play of the first half. Maurice Jones drew up the middle, has some room. Inside Panthers territory and finally brought down at the 34-yard line. And now Jacksonville will call for time as Jones drew scampers for 40 yards. Well, just when you think you got it figured out, they're going to take a knee and run out the clock. This guy pops up the middle and rips off a huge gain. Jack Del Rio now, he can throw the ball in the end zone. I don't think it's, you can even expect Josh Scobie to be able to get the football up in the air from outside of 30 yards right now in these conditions. So I think we're probably going to see a ball thrown into the end zone from Blaine Gabbert. Normally this would be well within Scobie's range, his career-long 59 yards. But uh, not in these conditions. You see Jones Drew's numbers, 54 yards on 10 attempts. And uh, the majority of them on that run right there. The, the, the Panthers defense has done a great job today shutting him down. The Jaguars are not used to at all being shut down in the running game the way the Panthers have controlled them today at the line of scrimmage. Jaguars do have one timeout. First and ten from the Panthers 36. Let's see if Gabbard can get the ball into the end zone in these conditions. Gabbard stepping into the throw. It's caught by Thomas sneaking forward. Touchdown. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown Jacksonville with no time on the clock. 36 yards Gabbard to Thomas. And Jacksonville has taken a lead. I, I got pretty excited about that, Spiro. Sorry about that, but look at look at this. How does this happen? Last play of the game. Great job by Blaine Gabbert just saying, well, if I can get it to Mike Thomas inside the 10, he can make a couple people miss a tackle. That's a touchdown. Unbelievable. That had to be discussed on the sideline by Dirk Cutter, Jack Del Rio. Somebody probably said, hey. They're going to expect us to throw the football into the end zone. If Thomas comes open underneath, put it right on. Let's see if he can scoot into the end zone. If that did indeed happen, which I think it did, what a great strategy to employ at this point in the ball game. Josh Scobie on for the point after. And for the Jacksonville Jaguars, their first touchdown in nine-plus quarters. Oh, you talk about a backbreaker for the Carolina Panthers. Maurice Jones drew set him up with a 40-yard run and then Gabbert finds Thomas on a 40-yard touchdown with no time remaining. You're exactly right. That 40-yard run by Maurice Jones drew, that's what gave the Jaguars a chance. That's the end of the first half in a rainy downtown Charlotte. We'll be back with the sprint halftime report after this message and a word from your local station. Well, it's a mud bath here in downtown Charlotte where the Jacksonville Jaguars lead the Panthers at halftime by the score of 10 to 5. And we welcome you to the NFL on CBS Week 3. Spiro Ditas alongside Steve Berline. We thought Jacksonville was going to take a knee to finish the half. They go 77 yards in 53 seconds. And Blaine Gabbert, heck of a way to find his first touchdown pass. Oh, unreal. I mean, prior to that, the second from the last play, the run by Maurice Jones-Drew, 39 yards in that play. He'd only had 14 yards rushing on the day, but that gave Jacksonville a chance to take a shot at the end zone, and we saw what happened. Absolutely amazing that they were able to find a way to get it in the end zone. Blaine Gabbert to Mike Thomas. So we'll take a look now at the NFL mobile recap presented by Verizon, and here it was, 36-yard touchdown strike. Mike Thomas from Blaine Gabbert. And the Jaguars are back in business. And I can honestly say I've never seen that before. To, to, to have two plays at the end of the half where you're trying to actually run the score up. That's why Jack Del Rio ran the football there. He thought 
hey, maybe they'll miss a few tackles. We'll be able to pop one up across the field and throw a ball into the end zone and have a shot at it. Boy, I don't think he believed that it would actually happen. You look at the first half stats. A lot of these Jacksonville yards came on the last two plays of the half because they were literally shut down for the rest of the first half. But, boy, it only takes one or two plays in the NFL. Panthers will kick to start the second half. Spiro Dita, Steve Berline, and our entire CBS crew. And now field conditions figure to be a huge factor more than anything else now over the final two quarters as the heavens have completely opened up. Flooding parts of the field here at Bank of America Stadium. There's Blaine Gabbert trying to towel himself down. Gabbert 7 of 13 in the first half. And look at some of the areas of the field here. That is just beyond the end zone in the near corner and I'm not sure even the best drainage system that an NFL stadium could present would make any difference the rain has been coming down in a torrential downpour here for about 60 minutes it, it's, it's, it's amazing how much rain came down in a short period of time but at least it's lightened up a little bit and now we can at least see the field so the Jaguars and company on the ground on first and ten that's Maurice Jones Drew's 40 yard run set up the touchdown late in the first half. As we mentioned, three plays, 77 yards in 53 seconds. Now the first play was just to run up the middle, just like that one, gained no yards. But then all of a sudden, a little bit lack of discipline from the Carolina Panthers. Maurice Jones Drew pops it through for a 40-yard gain, and then the throw very well executed. Blaine Gabbert to Mike Thomas, short of the end zone, and he found his way in. Gabbert nearly running into Jones Drew as he gives it to him. And JD barely able to get to the line of scrimmage, just pick up a couple of yards. So Jacksonville looking for their second win of the young season, trounced last weekend at the Jets. Third starting quarterback in 15 days, a terrible offensive start. Uh, can't really fault the rookie, didn't have much pass protection, Steve Early. A couple of drop balls by his receivers, but now Jacksonville with new life after that late touchdown before halftime. This is second and eight. Daisy Kareem out past the 35, lunges forward towards the 37, where the Jacksonville offense will have it here on third down. Well, if I'm Ron Rivera, I'm concerned right now. Not, not only because of what happened the last two plays of the first half and the morale of your team, but you've got to figure they're going to bounce back, but... Jacksonville, to me, seems to have found something off the left side of their offensive line. They've run the ball very well the first few plays of this drive, and of course, a big play at the end of the first half. I'd be concerned. Panthers showing blitz on third and four. Draw play. Gabbert to Kareem has the first down. Tripped up at the 45-yard line after Kareem picks up seven. And there again, we see it. You know, we've got an injury on the field, but I believe that's Greg Hardy limping around a little bit out there. But the commitment here that we're seeing from Jack Del Rio is, hey, these conditions are forcing us to find a way to get that run game going. We've got to find some life, and I think they found something. Now the weather has just been wild today. The sun now peaks through here in Charlotte. A lot of the fans still underneath the seats in the concourse area. Jacksonville with the opening possession of the third quarter up 10-5. A couple of minutes gone by here at Bank of America Stadium. High formation set on first and 10. Gabbert on the ground again to Kareem. Approaches the 50. Picks up about four yards on first down and suddenly Jacksonville playing with some confidence offensively. This is the kind of ball game Jack Del Rio wants right now. Given these situations, these conditions with the rookie making his first start in the NFL, he knows how valuable it is to have that run game going. But that run right there, you said four yards, that's a big four yards. If they can grind it out and pound it up in there and get four yards a pop, they're going to control this football game. There is Kareem moving the pile close to another first down inside Panthers territory as he approaches the 47. Most sloppily played first half, no thanks to the weather here. 
Gabbard fumbling a snap. He was set for a safety early on. And just all around sloppy play on both sides. That was the 60 yard Stewart run that was negated as the referee said that Stewart's elbow had hit the turf. This is third and one from the 46. Jones Drew lunges forward, takes on the tackler as Jacksonville moves the chains again. A four yard pickup by Maurice Jones Drew. Well, this, that was a nice tackle, believe it or not, if there is such a thing in this kind of a situation. Third and one, he picks up six yards. But look at look at Jason Williams right here. Maurice Jones Drew is so strong, lower body, that if you don't wrap up on him, he will bounce like a pinball right off of you, and he almost broke through that. Great job by Williams just hanging on and getting to the floor. Jones drew on first down, met right at the line of scrimmage, picks up two yards. Forward progress takes him just inside the 40. Tackle made by Williams. It's a Panthers defense, Steve, that has been racked by injuries. You mentioned he lost both John Beeson and Thomas Davis. The two starting linebackers, both captains going down in successive weeks. Beeson in week one with an Achilles. Davis last week tearing his ACL for the third time in 23 months. Devastating injuries and now trying to hold their ground here. Oh, Gabbard man. fumbles the snap. Looks like the Jaguars have recovered. Right. But if you're Ron Rivera, just to, some key injuries early in the season as they try to recruit. You're exactly right. And I was just about to make that comment about missing the linebackers. I think maybe we're seeing the cumulative effect of that right now. You're you're really getting it. That was a very aware heads up play by I think it was Uchi Winari. It was able to, as he was pulling to his left, he, his awareness to find that football on the ground and get on top of it, super job there. But you got to wonder, when you're, when you're missing two of your starting linebackers, there's going to be a cumulative effect, and maybe it's starting to show up now a little bit. Well, that in addition with the fact that they're starting the two rookies up front. Some unproven aspects of this Panthers defense. They wrap up Kareem, surround them in the backfield for a loss of yardage. Way back at the 47. It'll be fourth down. Yeah, the Panthers were not fooled right there. I think they were expecting to run all the way. They saw what the, the Jaguars did on the first third down conversion of this drive was third and three or four. They ran a trap up inside. I think they were playing run all the way in that drive in that situation right there. I don't think they expected Jack Del Rio to give Gabbard a chance to make a play through the air. See what Matt Turk has done so far on Monty Edwards. Standing back at his own eight. Turk, the 16 year veteran, angles the kick out of bounds inside the 20. And that's where Cam Newton and company will take over. Oh, a late surge in the first half has given the Jacksonville Jaguars a five point lead. Timeout. Well, Cam Newton breaking all kinds of records weeks one and two. Different story today, just 71 yards passing so far. But the rain has subsided, the sun is out. As Newton and company will try to pick up the pieces here on their first drive of the third quarter. D'Angelo Williams loses yardage on first down, a couple of yards behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be second and 12. Tonight on the season premiere of 60 Minutes inside the best counter-terror team in the world, New York City's elite police force, plus the creators of South Park. At 60 Minutes tonight, only on CBS. Spiro, that was a man's play right there by Tyson Alawalu. He broke through that line and just stuffed that play on sheer will. Second and 12, Newton from the shotgun. Over the middle, it's tipped. Because Lesney burying the intended receiver. It was Jeremy Shockey was thrown behind them and once again too high. And you wonder, Steve, at this point, if it's just a mental thing with Cam Newton. Well, he's off. There's no doubt about that. This ball should have been intercepted by Daryl Smith right there, cutting in front. He baited. We talked about Blaine Gabbard earlier being baited into the, a throw earlier in the ballgame. Right there, Cam Newton was, ba Newton was baited by the veteran linebacker, Daryl Smith, into throwing that pass underneath. And Daryl Smith almost made him pay for it. Newton just 12 for 24. This is third and long. It's deflected, nearly intercepted by Puzlesny at the 30. As Carolina dodges a bullet, 
Olsen was the intended receiver, and the Panthers will punt. They really did dodge a bullet. You're going to see. I think this ball should have been caught by Greg Olsen, but a risky throw by Cam Newton backed up in his, near his own end zone. You see the ball was put in a good spot, but over the middle of the field, I think when they're looking at that film tomorrow, I think it's going to be very clear Rob Chudzinski will tell Cam this is not the situation to throw that pass over the middle into a crowd. Jason Baker punting from his own seven. Cecil Shorts, it appeared as though he had signaled for the fair catch, then he started to maneuver to the sideline. Well, nonetheless, Jacksonville will have excellent field position when we come back. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. TD Ameritrade. And by Cadillac. No torrential downpour here for about 60 minutes. In the first half, the rain has now stopped. The field is all chewed up. In the Bank of America Stadium where Jacksonville takes over. Leading 10-5 with 7.53 to play in quarter number three. Girl Dita, Steve Burline, our entire CBS crew, Gabbert on the ground. Lose yardage, James Anderson, the outside linebacker, got there first for the Panthers. Jacksonville, Steve, now 11 plays that they've run since halftime. Every one of them has been on the ground. Yeah, and I, and I think Ron Rivera, as the head coach, and then Sean McDermott, the defense coordinator for the Panthers, have figured that out. And it was made very clear on the last drive that Jacksonville, with these conditions, wants to hammer it up in there. We saw a great run blitz right there. James Anderson shooting through the gap saying, okay, you're going to run the ball, we're going to play the run. Here's Gabbard on second and 11. There's it out far side. Hill has a step, makes the catch, but he's out of bounds. Uh, Gabbard airing it out, put it on the money. But Hill just ran out of real estate. Well, you said on the money, you're right, Sparrow, in terms of, of, a, of the ball being caught, but he wasn't caught inbounds. You got to, as a quarterback, you want to give your player a chance to make that catch. The aiming point on a pass like this is about 40 yards up the field, about three or four yards in from the sideline, so the receiver can adjust a little bit to the outside. That time, Gabbard didn't give any room to adjust to the outside. Dick Carter, the Jags offensive coordinator, will put Gabbard in the shotgun on third and long. Draw play to Jones, Drew. Panthers defensive front holds its ground. Now some pushing after the snap. Looks like Brad Meester and Terrell McLean got tangled up. As Jacksonville will punt. I'd like to see that fight out of the rookie, Terrell McLean, right there. We've heard a lot of praise about them this week around the Panthers facility. These two young defensive linemen. They got stout there on that last drive. Well, Monty Edwards will field the punt here from Matt Turk. Turk drops it for a moment, and he's wrapped up and brought down at the 38-yard line. Boy, Jacksonville with poor special teams play last week at the Jets. And a huge mistake here will give it to Cam Newton and company inside Jacksonville territory. Matt Turk, the 16th year veteran, couldn't feel the punt. Timeout. Oh, the box snap on the Jacksonville side. Matt Turk tackled inside their own territory. Now Cam Newton and company with their best field position since early in the game. D'Angelo Williams up to the 35-yard line as Matt Turk looks on the 16th year veteran punter. Yeah, and there's really no excuse. Matt Turk knows that. That ball was a perfect snap. It just slipped out of his hand, and that, that is a very, very costly mistake at a key point in the game. If I'm Rob Chudzinski right now, and I know his thinking, he's from the North Turner School of Offensive Football, take a shot right now. Let's go for the end zone. Just 135 yards of total offense for the Panthers. Here's Williams on a cutback. Need to get to the 28. As we take a look at that botched punt here one more time. Now you can see, I mean, that, that ball is about as perfect a snap as it can be, especially given these conditions. He's got it in his hands. It just slipped right out of his hands. He's getting ready to drop it. And R Richie Br Brockle <laughs> more than willing to, to wrestle with uh, Matt Turk there in that situation for sure. 
Turk can only hope that his Jaguars can get out of this jam. This is third and three from the 30. Newton, play action. Near side finds Olsen for the first down at the 22-yard line. Nine yards through the air and a Carolina first down. Sparrow, I'm sure you've heard that the offense has the advantage in wet conditions because they know where they're going and the defender doesn't. This is a great example of that right now. Greg Olson, he knew exactly where he was going, and you saw that Derek Cox had no idea, and when he did see that Greg Olson had stopped, he couldn't get himself stopped and planted quickly enough to make a play on that ball. Brandon LaFell, the second-year wideout, resets at the top of your screen. This is first and ten. Draw play, Jonathan Stewart. Up inside the 20. Stewart had a 60-yard run called back late in the first half. They say that his elbow made contact. Otherwise, the Panthers would have had a first and goal, a chance to build on their lead before halftime. But a brand-new football game here, down five points. And Cam Newton's got to do something here himself. And he's, he's settled down a little bit, made a couple of nice throws the second half, but he's got to reestablish his confidence in making some plays out here for his team. This is second and five. They fake the draw play. Newton outside. A nice coverage by Puzlesny forcing the cutback from Newton, who gets inside the 15. Well, we talked in the open about how Paul Pozlez is going to have a lot of pressure on him to make plays just like this. One-on-one -on -one in the open field, you saw great discipline by Pozlesny right there. A lot of guys would have lost balance and tried to shoot it. Cam Newton, when he made that quick stop, Pozlesny just kept his balance, kept his base, waited for Cam Newton to change direction, and was right there to make the play. Pozlesny leaving Buffalo after four years there, chance to come here and play the middle in his 4-3 Jaguars defense. Now trying to hold its ground. Third and three Panthers from the 15. Newton trying to get it himself. He won't. Maybe a yard. Needed to get to the 12-yard line, and it will be fourth down for the Panthers. I think this is Cam Newton's welcome to the NFL moment right here. This is where you realize it's a little bit different than even playing in the SEC. Right there, Cam Newton is used to being able to run over people move the pile and pick up three yards right there he ran into a brick wall called the jacksonville jaguars front seven and they drove him back forcing carolina to kick a field goal so lindo mare will come on this will be a 32 yard attempt jason baker the punter to hold mare's kick is good no points have been at a premium here Rainy conditions in Charlotte where the Jaguars lead the Panthers 10-8. You're watching the NFL on CBS. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Allstate. Dollar for dollar, nobody protects you from mayhem like Allstate. And by DirecTV. This season, NFL Sunday ticket is included when you switch. 32-yard field goal for Orlando Mare. Cuts the Jacksonville lead to 10-8 with 2.24 to play. Third quarter here in downtown Charlotte. Spiro Vita, Steve Berline, our entire CBS crew. Deji Kareem will field here from just two yards deep in his own end zone. Muddy conditions here. After a downpour for much of the first half, 24 yards on the return as Blaine Gabbard and company will take over when we come back. A two-point lead for Jacksonville here in week three. Here in Charlotte, 10-8 Jacksonville, 218 to play third quarter. A Jacksonville offense that has been so inept at times this season. Just two offensive touchdowns here in 10 plus quarters this season. And despite all that, they're up two points. Another box snap, Gabbard and company falling on it. Again, rainy, wet conditions. Steve, you've played on this kind of a field before. It makes it very tough, especially for a rookie with very little experience. It does, and that's showing up right there because I don't care what the conditions are. The quarterback center exchange under center is the most fundamental play in football. You know, you can sit there and say it's going to happen once in a while. That's the third time we've seen it happen today. There's really no excuse for that. 
This is second and 11. Maurice Jones drew big hole up the gut, still on his feet out past the 35 and brought down at the 40. As Maurice Jones drew picking up chunks of yardage, 21 more on the ground, and a Jaguars first down. Well, right up the gut, you're going to see split right between Terrell McClain and Sione Fool. There's Fool right there. He got a little bit too wide, got out of his gap, and a running back like Maurice Jones drew with his skill and his sense of where the soft spot is, he's going to make you pay if you make a mistake. Both McClain and Fua got too wide on that play. That allowed for the big cutback. Look at the mix of run and pass. It's been almost all run here in the quarter. Jones drew over the century mark for the first time this season. Picks up six more as he is off to the best three-game start of his six-year NFL career. Spiro, they're not doing anything fancy here whatsoever. I think they're just taking advantage of the way that the interior defensive linemen, Sione Fua and Terrell McLean, are lining up. They're lining up wide, head up or outside the guards, and they're just hitting right up inside of them every single time. And Carolina has had an answer for him this drive. This is second and four. Jones Drew getting to midfield. He's inches shy of the first down marker. Tackle is made by Greg Hardy. And as you see on the graphic right there, the Jacksonville Jaguars have really been struggling to move the football up and down the field this year. They've only been in the red zone one time this year. That was in the first game of the year, fewest in the league. That's, uh, that's not a stat that Jack Del Rio is proud of. And despite all that, they're up two points. A win and today. And Jacksonville goes to two and one. End of three in Charlotte. This is the NFL on CBS. Bank of America Stadium, start of the fourth quarter. Jacksonville with possession, trying to build on a two-point lead, 10-8. They'll have it third and one at their own 49. Gabbard to Jones. Drew needed to get to the 50. And this will depend on the spot. Did his forward progress get him there? Uh, that I was about to say before the play, Spiro, this is a big, big Third down yeah. conversion, conversion, and there's no doubt they didn't get it. I think Carolina stood up and made a statement on that play, but I would not. I'm expecting Jack Del Rio to go for it. The kicker's not out there. Jack Del Rio has always been very aggressive going for these fourth and shorts around midfield. So Del Rio rolling the dice behind a 21-year-old rookie quarterback, Blaine Gabbert. This is fourth and inches. Gabbert oh. trying to lunge for it, second step, may have got it, and he got it. Well, I'll tell you what, the Panthers had it stuffed at the snap. They really did. Great second effort by Blaine Gabbert. That's a long, almost full yard that he had to pick up right there. I, I kind of questioned the call right there with the rookie. You haven't seen him run the quarterback sneak before in a live situation. You got Maurice Jones Drew back there. But second effort from Blaine Gabbert got it converted. Well, this is a day that Gabbert has dreamt up since he was a kid growing up in St. Louis. Shaky start. But now this offense showing some light. Up two, they'll use yardage here on first down. Back to New York and an update with James Brown. Coach Carr wanted to see some resilience on the part of the Texans. You know, after getting a Drew Brees interception, you hear a nice shot. Finds James Casey, 26 yards, and after being down, they take the lead, go up by nine in the fourth quarter in New Orleans. Oh, can they do it, Steve? 15 to 24 for 289 yards and two touches for Matt Shaw. Back to Spiro and Steve. Well, Coach, you're right. They're proving it to me. They've answered the bell this year several times, and they've, they've won games they're supposed to win, and they're making plays now against a good team down in New Orleans. Flag flies here behind the line of scrimmage. Ball start. Number 73 offense. Five-yard penalty. Second down. That's Evan Britton making his debut this season for Jacksonville. And that's the first two games recovering from a back injury. Coming up on the Subway post-game show, join JB, Dan, Shannon, Boomer, and Coach Cower for all the latest scores and highlights. Week three around the NFL, it's all coming up on the Subway post-game show. Jaguars going the wrong direction now, second and 16 from the 45. Gabbard 
right over the outstretched arms, finds Jones Drew inside Panthers territory right at the marker. Ball was dislodged out of bounds, and it looks as though Jones Drew is about a half yard short. Oh, great call right there. You're going to see out in front. You had Guy Wimper, number 68, making the block that sprung Maurice Jones Drew. And you talked about even Britton being in the lineup again. His normal position is right tackle, but they thought that Wimper was playing so well at right tackle that they could improve the line by moving Britton over to left guard, taking the place of the rookie, Will Rackley. So they've got a strong offensive line out there at this point. 15 yards, Gabbert missed the step again. It's recovered by the Jaguars. But they'll lose yardage now to be fourth and about four yards to go. Well, they went for it earlier at the 50. Well, meantime, who's got the football here? It appeared as though Jacksonville had it. <laughs> Those guys are trying to keep each other's hands down. Jaguars do retain possession. Well, they went for it earlier at the 50, and now it looks as though Del Rio may send out the punt team. All right, let me give you a fact, Spiro, a football fact from a football player's perspective. You've got a center, Brad Meester, 12 years in the NFL. He snapped the ball to a lot of different quarterbacks. I guarantee you there's never been four fumbled snaps in the game that he's ever played in in the NFL. That's just something that the rookies got to work out. They've got to get more reps together. I guarantee you they will get so many snaps this week in practice that Gabbert will get sick of it. Jack Del Rio not taking any chances. Matt Turk sent on. Mock the snap himself earlier in the quarter. This one fielded cleanly. Well, Monty Edwards will let it bounce into the end zone as the Panthers will take over from their own 20. Well, it's a two-point game here in Charlotte. Fourth quarter, week three. 10-8 Jacksonville. We've seen sun, we've seen torrential downpours here in Charlotte. Uh, not many points uh, as Cam Newton and company take over. Down two, that one is severely underthrown by Shockey, and Newton continues to struggle. Yeah, it, there's no doubt about it. I mean, from the earliest point of this ball game, before the rain started coming down, he was missing some balls high, low, a little bit off with his, with his, with his reads. And I think right now we're seeing, for the first time, a little bit of the inexperienced showing up he's just not really confident exactly what the Jaguars are doing out there and it's showing up well, you'd like to give the Jacksonville defense maybe a little bit more credit but there have been throws that he's just flat out missed Newton now just 13 for 27 this is second and 10 that time finds the tight end Olsen for the first down at the 35 yard line after a pickup of 15 yards uh, that was a nice strong throw there by Cam Newton but as we've been discussing, there's been other opportunities to make plays. I think Jacksonville has had a very good game plan, but he has had opportunities to make plays. And really, Jacksonville should have had a couple of interceptions. One of them right there, Derek Lowry should have caught that ball. Uh, the Panthers are lucky that there haven't been a few more turnovers. Newton from the shotgun on first and ten, fakes the draw to Williams. Caught at shocking inside Jacksonville territory. So back-to-back -back first downs, they pick up 16 more yards. And it'll be first and 10 for the Panthers. All right, you're going to see good play call here. Rob Trudzinski, they found a chink in the armor here at Jacksonville. Look at the play-action fake. You see Daryl Smith, number 52, steps up to play the run, and that opens up a big hole for Jeremy Shockey to slip right behind him. A nice, easy throw and catch for the Carolina Panthers. Williams alone set back, Olsen in motion on first and ten. Williams loses yardage, buried in the backfield. Daryl Smith and a host of others getting there. Tonight on CBS, don't miss Emmy Award winning Julia Margulies in the season premiere of The Good Wife. Catch it on its new night in time tonight after the amazing race only on CBS. Cam Newton already moving into eighth place on the Panthers' all-time passing list. 
Both of these franchises coming into the NFL in the same year, 1995. And a defensive battle here in Charlotte. Newton airing it out, nearly picked off. Boy, that's the second or third time that Newton has been very close to throwing a pick. Trying to find his man over the middle, it's third and long. And that was great coverage by Daryl Smith on this play. You're gonna see, we'll see if he does even have a case against now. He that ball definitely out, but great position. The linebacker is taut when you're running down the field with a tight end, and these tight ends for the Panthers are good runners. You gotta stay on that inside shoulder, make the quarterback throw it up and over you, so it brings the safety into play. If they underthrow it like that one was, you got a chance to make the play. Four receivers in the formation on third and 13. Newton flushed out. Barely gets it off, and it's incomplete. And he went nice down job hard. to get rid of it, but it's fourth down. Newton went down hard on that sideline. He's back up, but I can guarantee you this. This is another one of those welcome to the NFL moments. There are not many defensive linemen that have ever run down Cam Newton. Right there, Cam, I think he thought when he had made the little hesitation move to the outside, he was going to get the edge, but boy, he went down hard on the side. That was Collins that ran him down and kept him from getting to the edge. Nate Collins, the second-year man from Virginia. Able to track down Newton. Now Jason Baker to punch Cecil Shorts back at his own 15. Signals for the fair catch. Takes a Jacksonville bounce into the end zone, and it'll be first and 10 from the 20. When we come back, 10-8 Jaguars, nine and change left in Charlotte. On CBS is sponsored by the Home Depot. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. The 2011 Ford F-150, built Ford tough. And by National Car Rental. Go national, go like a pro. Well, still anyone's game here. And rainy and wet conditions at Bank of America Stadium. 10-8 Jaguars as they take over from their own 20. Here is Maurice Jones-Drew. Fumbled it late. Recovers it at the 38-yard line. Holding. Number 75 offense. 10-yard penalty. Repeat first down. Bill Levy, our referee, and Jack Del Rio's team has really shot themselves in the foot with some costly penalties today. Yeah, Eugene Monroe right there, guilty. He's wondering what the heck happened, but boy, it sure negated a nice run. Again, one more time, spill right up the gut between those defensive tackles, the young defensive tackles for the Panthers. Ten-yard penalty, second penalty called on Monroe today. His first one negated a 17-yard pass play on the Jaguars' first drive. This is first and 20 from the 10. Gabbard to Jones Drew. Barely got to the line of scrimmage. Had a chance to visit with Maurice yesterday. Take a look at some of his handiwork today. He's picked up the majority of his yards, Steve, in chunks. He really has. The 39-yarder right before the end of the first half. That was the key play of the game, that one right there. That was the, the big dagger for the Carolina Panthers. But the Panthers still breathing, only down two at this point. But they better shore up that run defense. So they're going to get hurt again. See what he's done. He's been a workhorse. This is second and 20. Jacksonville has run 24 plays in the second half. 22 of them have been on the ground. And I guarantee you what you're going to see right here on third and... 18 or 17, whatever it is right now. Third and 16, backed up in your own end zone, nursing a two-point lead with a rookie quarterback. I guarantee you, you're going to see a draw play or a screen pass. That's the only two options right here, or a run. So it'd be three options. Jaguars just three for 12 on third downs today. Up two, as we are inside of eight minutes left. Gafford. Play action. Finds Kareem out of the backfield. Out past the 25, but he's just short of the marker. That was a screen pass I was talking about. And that was a great call, but I'm very, very surprised 
the Panthers were caught off guard by that. You're going to see the good hard play action, but then watch the left side of the line for the Jaguars. See them all out there out in front of Maurice Jones, too, right? Or in front of, uh, in front of Daisy Kareem. Daisy Kareem, I'm sorry. Couldn't get it out there, but all those guys set up very, very well. I'm surprised that Carolina wasn't stiffing that out better. Uh, Kareem nearly picked up the first, a yard short after a 14-yard pass play. Tork gets it off. This is on Monty Edwards from the 30. Edwards up the sideline. Lost the football. Oh, he still had it. But it squirted through. Our vision blocked here for a moment. But Edwards with a nifty little run. 13 yards up the side after the 40-yard punt from Matt Turk. Jacksonville looking for its second win of the season. Timeout. A well, good field position for Cam Newton in this Carolina offense. Down two. But the Panthers running out of time with 6.44 left on the clock. Newton sucks in the pass rush by Stewart. Stewart inside Jaguars territory. A first down and a lot more. Down to the 37. I want you to watch this, Sparrow, right here. Watch Jeff Hangarner, the right guard, number 63, get out in front. Now, it's not a thing of beauty. Look at him do the belly flop right there in front of Clint Sessions. But you know what? It worked. It occupied Clint Sessions. You Linemen are told, get out there and just throw. Throw the cut block at one of those linebackers. Make them avoid you and our back will be by. 18 yards through the air, Newton to Stewart. And it's first and 10 from the 38. Newton hit as he throws by Smith for the second time today. Smith breaks a tackle. Another Panthers first down and now Carolina back in business. You know, we were talking during the break about where Steve Smith been before that catch. Only one catch today for two yards. Rasheem Mathis told us in our meeting with him yesterday, this guy is still one of the top five premier playmakers in the NFL. He mentioned the names Larry Fitzgerald, Andre Johnson, Deshaun Jackson. Steve Smith has still got that kind of respect around the NFL. Smith nearing Moosin's Muhammad's. Uh, Moose and Muhammad, I should say, franchise record for all-time receiving yards. Here is D'Angelo Williams on first and ten. Clock continues to run. We come up on five minutes to play. And now can Jack Del Rio's defense hold its ground as they protect this two-point lead? Well, I wouldn't be surprised here. You're, you're, you're on the edge with these conditions, probably of Olindo Mare's field goal range you're looking at probably a close to a 40 yarder right now I think Ron Rivera is pretty comfortable with that you might see a blitz coming up here in one of these plays from the Jaguars Newton from the shotgun on second and nine pocket collapses Newton squirts through inside the 20 and forced out of bounds at the 17 yard line about a yard and a half maybe two yards short of the marker Tell you what, you can, again, we're talking about not stopping Cam Newton. You're just trying to contain him, not give him the big run. And I think Jack Del Rio would probably consider this a successful play, even though Cam Newton picked up seven yards because you saw a nice tackle by Daryl Smith and you saw a bunch of guys coming up, forcing Cam Newton to the sideline and kept it from being a very big play. Well, they've had good field position, but Carolina unable to take advantage for the most part today. Third and two. They need to get to the 14. Newton finds Olsen inside the five touchdown Panthers. And Carolina retakes the lead. A oh, very well executed play. You saw Greg Olsen coming out of the backfield on that play almost following Steve Smith Steve Smith on that play was truly the decoy trying to occupy the coverage and a good job by Greg Olson being patient stepping behind him ball on the money from Cam Newton you got a nice touchdown Olson among the most prolific receiving tight ends in the NFL since 2009 you see what he's done today his first score and the Panthers on the verge of building on their lead here. It looks as though they're going to go for the two-point conversion. And will try to push their lead to six. 
Well, the math on that is kind of confusing to me to go for to, to go for the six-point lead. I'm sure Ron Rivera has a reason for it. Change up the formation. Shockey steps into the slot at the top of the screen. Near side end zone. Olsen catches. Got it. Was he in? Yes. So Olsen with the 16-yard touchdown and a two-point conversion. And it's 16-10 Carolina. Well, you see right there. You see that there was a linebacker one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. That was Russell Allen with Greg Olson on the outside. That's a mismatch. They're going to capitalize every time. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by the Droid Bionic, made from machines to rule all machines, only at Verizon. And by Subway Restaurants. Try the new oven crisp chicken. Always baked, never fried. Now the Panthers so close to a win in weeks one and two, lo uh, losers at Arizona on opening day. Last weekend had the 13-point lead on the Packers before losing by seven. And right now, Greg Olson's touchdown as they continue to review this two-point conversion play. Was Olson in? It looks as though he was. If the play stands... After reviewing the two-point try, the ruling on the field is confirmed. The receiver did have two feet in with control. So the lead remains at six for Carolina, 16 to 10. But Steve still plenty of time, 420 on the clock for that man, Blaine Gabbert. Yep, and I'll tell you what, this is going to be a great test for Blaine Gabbert because even though the Jaguars have been running the football well, he's going to have to make some plays through the air on this drive, I would expect. I don't think, even though there's plenty of time on the clock, they run the ball. They don't have to throw it yet. You're not going to go the length of the field in this situation without making yards through the air. Lindo Mari will kick from his own 35. And Deji Kareem back deep from his own one. Kareem will field it from five yards deep. Out past the 20. Out past the 30. And tackled at the 32-yard line. Well, Blaine Gabbert, he's... He's shown some flashes, done some good things too, but a lot of a lot of learning experience. Let's call him those today. The ball on the ground way too many times. Four times. That's number three right there. I'll tell you, it's just it's just something that he's gonna have to keep working on and maturing and learning about. And you expect some of these things to happen to a young quarterback. Now we're gonna see what he's made of inside, how he handles this situation. A touchdown and an interception today for the 21-year-old rookie, St. Louis native. Laying in front of his father and brother today. Screen pass near side. Look at Jones Drew breaking tackles. One of the Carolina defenders losing his sneaker behind the play as Jones Drew picks up six. Coming up with the Subway Post Game Show, JP, Dan Shannon, Boomer, and Coach Cower with all the latest scores and highlights. The Subway Post Game Show comes your way after the final gun here in Charlotte. Spiro Vitas, Steve Carline, our entire CBS crew with you. Draw play, Gabbert to Jones Drew. Picks up a couple of yards. And a tip of the cap, Steve, to our entire uh, crew here braving the wet, rainy conditions. Our camera guys have been braving it all day long. Torrential downpours here for much of the day. As the Jaguars will be faced here with a third and two with 3.20 remaining. They'll speed things up. Here's Gabbard. Sideline incomplete. And Gabbard put it right in Thomas's breadbasket. There is a marker thrown. I'm expecting offensive pass interference, I think, here in this, by the nature where that flag was thrown. Bill Levy, our referee. Pass interference, number 80 offense. 10 yard penalty. You play third down. And you're going to see Mike Thomas right here on the inside. He goes up and at the top of the route. You're going to see there, there's some holding going on. Now, that could have been could have been called either way. They were outside that five-yard chuck zone. That was Captain Munderland. They were mixing it up a little bit. 
But I'll tell you what, it was a nice timed throw, nicely timed throw by Blaine Gabbard. I think Mike Thomas's rhythm was a little bit off because of the contact with Captain Munderland. That's what kept that ball from being completed. Turns out to be a blessing for Jacksonville. Gives them an extra play here. Yeah, and otherwise you, would have had to punt. You wonder why they accept that penalty. Uh, you, you figure Jacksonville's going to go for it on fourth down. You might as well see if you can stop them here on third down. Third and 12 with Jacksonville down six. Gabbard from the shotgun. Rolling near side. Incomplete. Mike Thomas, the intended receiver, and Jack Del Rio will punt. Well, that's exactly why Ron Rivera, I think that was a great call except in the penalty when you look back at it. He wanted to try and stuff him on third down and make him have to deal with this fourth and long situation, either punt it or try and convert a fourth and almost impossible. So now you got to bank on your defense making a good stand, three and out, hopefully you get the ball back. Both teams with all three timeouts remaining. Still have the two-minute warning here as Matt Turk comes on from his own 20. Well, Monty Edwards from his own 32. Gets to the 42-yard line. 37-yard punt and a return of nine yards. Next Sunday, the NFL on CBS hits on doubleheader action around the league. First big fan of the Steelers take on Matt Schaub and the Texans. And Kyle Orton and the Broncos take on Aaron Rodgers and the Super Bowl champion Green Bay Packers. Check your local listings beginning with the NFL Today, presented by Southwest Airlines. All right, Sparrow, this is where we're going to see what kind of confidence Rob Tudzinski has in Cam Newton. I think the Jaguars are going to come out. They've got four stoppages of the clock, but they know they've got to stop them on a three and out. We'll see if they can shut them down on first and second down and make Cam Newton throw the ball. Newton looking mortal today after 400-yard passing games in his first two starts. Timeout, Jacksonville. Their first, 32nd timeout. All his stretch of 400-yard games will end, but you see there the first rookie to throw for 1,000-plus yards over his first three games. There's a lot of firsts that he's been accomplishing yes. this year. Not only is he wearing number one, he's been the first guy to do a bunch of different pretty impressive things this year. Today... If they can find a way to squeak this one out, I guarantee you he'd be the happiest guy in the world. He, everybody says there's Rob Chudzinski right here on the right-hand side sitting there. And if Cam Newton can find a way to win this game, that's the only stat he cares about. He's played very well the first two games. They come away with a loss, and he was the most disappointed guy in the locker room. That's one of the things that's really endeared his teammates to him is how badly he wants to win. He hates losing more than anything in the world. Jacksonville, two timeouts left, 2.43 left on the clock. This is second and six. Near side, plenty of real estate. It's Stewart inside the 40, and a huge first down run for Carolina. 22 yards for Jonathan Stewart. Oh, this is the first true counter play I can remember seeing today. All the flow was going to the right side. You pulled your guard and tackle around the left side, and Jacksonville was caught totally off guard. Called the second time out. Jacksonville the was caught. Operator put 2:30 on the game clock. 2:30. Totally off Thank guard you. on that play. This is the 30 second time out. Now Jack Del Rio does know that he's still got three stoppages, so there there is still a chance. You got two timeouts and a two minute warning, so they're going to get one more chance to try and shut down. Oh, we're down to one timeout. Bad math on my part. Jack Del Rio, I'm sure he knew they were down to one timeout. <laughs> Carolina 16, Jacksonville 10. Jaguars winners on opening day against the Titans. Lost big at the Jets last Sunday. Panthers, meantime, lost on opening day to the Cardinals. Last Sunday, beaten here by the Packers. And now trying to break through with their first win here in 2011. It's been a struggle for Cam Newton. First year phenom, national champion at Auburn last year. But in order for Jacksonville to kill the clock, they still got to get another first down. First and 10 from the 35, Williams chugging forward. Picks up about a half yard. Williams today, 10 rushes, just 18 yards. Guy who was at 1,100 yards a year ago. 
third straight game in which he has been awfully quiet. And that really does have to be a cause for concern for the Carolina Panthers because as we're seeing, Cam Newton is human. He's going to make some mistakes. This He's going to have to be able to warning. run the football. No, we've reached a two-minute warning with the Panthers clinging to the six-point lead. Stay with us. Well, two rookie quarterbacks battling here in Charlotte today, braving the rainy, wet conditions. Right now, Cam Newton's Panthers on top, 16 to 10, two minutes to play. Second down. Rob Chizinski taking no chances. Jack Del Rio, meantime, will burn Jacksonville. his final Third timeout. and final charge timeout. 30-second timeout. Take a look at who the Panthers will face from here. Very tough schedule coming up. Two of their next three on the road against all three of those teams who were in the playoffs, Steve, last year. Yeah. They'll head to Chicago next weekend. And the Redskins playing very well so far this year, too, playing the Cowboys on Monday night. But 2-0, what a great start for them. Uh, a lot of people believe they're going to challenge the way they're playing right now for that NFC East. There's Ron Rivera finally getting a chance to be a head coach. Interviewed for nine different positions around the NFL. And finally has found a home here in Charlotte. Coming over from San Diego, bringing Rob Chizinski with him. You know what I think is Ron Rivera's biggest asset, aside from being a tremendous football coach from a defensive perspective, from an overall perspective, is consistency. That's what the players love, and that's just going to pay off for him over time. This is third and 11 from the 35. Stewart. The Panthers will try to milk the clock as much as they can. Jaguars are out of timeouts. Well, you've got a decision to make now. Ron Rivera, how much confidence do you have in your kicker, your kicking game? I think we're probably going to see a punt. And I guarantee you, you might even see Ron Rivera get upset uh, if, if Jason Baker punts his ball into the end zone, if they do decide to punt. And if they do punt, maybe they'll take the penalty here. It looks as though they will. Yeah. That'll give the punter five more yards. Mare is kind of starting to walk out there. I think he wants to kick it. Well, he may take a shot here. So they'll call the timeout. Carolina, they're first. And it looks as though Rivera timeout. may gamble here and try the field goal. I, I can't see it happening. I, I really can't. It's a 50-yard kick. Uh, in this situation, if something bad happens, even if you miss the kick, you're giving them the ball at the 40-yard line. That's where the ball is going to be spotted. So I, I would not uh, – I would bet pretty much everything that I have. Ron Rivera being his – as thoughtful of a guy as he is, he's going to consider all the options. This ball is going to be punted. Well, you know, Mari's lobbying to attempt oh, to yeah, he was... walk off the field as Baker will come on to punt. Yeah, he was right there in front of <laughs> Rivera, showing him he's loose and ready to go. I don't think Ron Rivera had any doubt what he wanted. He knew before he called that timeout he was going to punt it. Cecil Shorts, back deep for Jacksonville, stands at his own seven. Jaguars have no timeouts, down six. With a minute nine remaining. Baker's kick inside the five. Oh. Off the hands of Munnerlin and into the end zone. They couldn't have drawn it up any more perfectly. As Jacksonville catches a break, they'll have it at their own 20. With a minute and two seconds on the clock. You know something that surprised me on that play right there, Spiro, you know, there's always the chess game going on. I'm really surprised. You know you're not going to get a return in that situation if you're Jacksonville because they're, they're going to, they're going to, they're looking for the, the short punt. You're not going to get enough room to return the ball. Why would you not go for the block in that situation? So here is Blaine Gabbert, the 10th overall pick in the NFL draft, 21 years of age, down six in his first NFL start. Gabbert, near side complete. That's Mike Thomas at the 32, but they have to hurry. I'll tell you what, that one was threaded in there. That was a tough throw by Blaine Gabbert. 12 yards makes it first and 10 from the 31. 40 seconds. 
Gabbard. Incomplete. And a penalty marker is thrown. This one could be. You can go either way here, either offensive or defensive interference. Mike Thomas, the intended receiver. Pass interference, number 41. Oh, my goodness. First down, spot of the foul. That is a huge penalty. So Jacksonville now inside Panthers territory at the 45-yard line. Yeah, they were tangled up. I, I think that Mike Thomas was definitely doing the initiating there, but Captain Munderland, I, that's one of those calls that could go either way. Again, Jacksonville with no timeouts left. 38 seconds remaining, down six. Gabbard, under pressure, was it caught? Mercedes Lewis with the catch, but the clock's still running. Got to get up and kill the clock. Got to 21 seconds. Gabbard will run the play. No timeouts left. The previous play is under review. Hmm. Well, we'll see. Yeah, I, I, I think that that's a nice catch by Mercedes Lewis. The ball, you'll see the tip of it right there. The ball, tip of the ball does look like it might hit the ground, but he's got both hands under the football. He's got control of it. This is going to be interesting because I, I believe he controlled that football all the way, but the rule says you've got to complete the catch with the ball under your control. So that ball definitely did touch the ground. I'm saying they're going to stick with the call, though. So 16 seconds remaining. The Jaguars out of timeouts. If the play stands, they'll have it at the Carolina 35-yard line. Sparrow Dita, Steve Berline, our entire CBS crew here from Charlotte. The Jacksonville Jaguars out of timeouts, down six, which is 16 seconds remaining. This catch by Mercedes Lewis being reviewed. The call on the field was a completion. As we await the official word After from the reviewing the play, the ruling on the field is confirmed. The receiver possessed the ball and never lost control. First down. Yeah, that's the right call. Second, Second, one. Second and one. So now, you know, the worst situation possible for Carolina. Getting that pass interference call at that time of the ball game. Gives him a chance to go for the end zone for sure. Lane Gabbert, his first NFL start. Barking signals. Clock running. This is the final play. Gabbert, middle of the field, and it's intercepted. Incomplete. The official call as this one is over. The clock immediately started running. Jacksonville had no timeouts left. And as Jack Del Rio and company will fall six points short. And that's what Jack Del Rio is, is complaining about. Why is that clock starting in that situation? That's why we saw Blaine Gabbard getting so upset out there. He wanted Meester to snap that football. I think a lot of people, I think that Jack Del Rio and, and, and the Jaguars were expecting that clock to stop and not be running before the play was snapped. Meester had no idea that the clock was running. The Jacksonville center, well, it you was, saw Gabbert trying to get his attention, couldn't. And by the time he did, there was just five seconds left. So the final score here at Bank of America Stadium, the Panthers.